Welcome to the Gym Wits Podcast. I'm Ryan George. I'm Justin Guild, aka Chef Sonic. And we are the Gym Wits. So as usual, we've been we're we're consistently recording, but we're also consistently a week late. So it's now um post uh kind of election decision. So, you know, last week when we were talking, it was just after it was Wednesday after election day, and uh we were still fairly unsure of what was going on. Now we're pretty certain that um Joe Biden's gonna win. But um how are things by wait like when it was officially announced, um what what were things go how are things by you? Uh, in Nashville every most of the people that I know were pretty happy about it. Mm. You know, ha- happy to have the the you know the the monster, and he and the and if you ask me, the more this drags on, the more he just is becomes more and more of a despicable human being. Like yeah. he's trying to incite a civil war. Yeah, but so, more, like it's just more than, awful. More than that, it's kind of like I, I just it's like criminal. You know the that like we're right now we're in a position, and we're going to talk a little bit about coronavirus um, numbers. I mean, it's it is skyrocketing i mean we've had the most yeah. deaths since may um we're, we're it's it's at a point where it's like it, it's had if, if it's not there already it's kind of a runaway effect where uh, we can't get control of it and 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 he's largely very responsible for that and and sure. it, to me it's like criminal and so it's like and that he's effectively checked out of it is terrifying um and even that pence who's like the leader of the covid response team is like going on vacation while we're you know you get you have places like china where it's not it's just done you know they, they don't deal with it any you know or not that they don't deal with it but like they've effectively effectively like eradicated it and so many other countries have just dealt with it on a much better level than us that yeah it's like you know this stage like i you know i don't know how you you can support it, <laughs> but he, clearly he did because he had, you know, 70, over 70 million people voted for him. Um, but it's kind of funny. When, so I was training with friends. We, we like, we train in the park and um, the park that we train at, um, this is on Saturday. Um, there's like kids soccer games going on. So we're kind of in the middle of the training. And all of a sudden we just, I hear some, lo- we hear loud cheering, like people just cheering crazy. And I was like, that's weird. Like why, you know, who cares that much about like an eight year old's like soccer game. And then like, we realize, Oh, it's cause Biden won. And you know, obviously being in New York is up that kind of in at certain moments, kind of pandemonium in the street, people cheering yeah. and dancing and oh, people were cars honking. It's partying all over the country, yeah. in various cities, all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know? really. So yeah, I mean, yeah. So I mean, we could, we'll limit it here. Obviously. Maybe if it, just, well, yeah. You know, I, I'm just wondering how, <laughs> how the people that actually believe in this election election fraud yeah. are it, it would be the greatest feat in like the history of mankind to pull something on yeah. that large of a scale and how people are so sure of it well, it's like well, this it would be the greatest conspiracy yeah. theory it would be so hard to pull off it would take like the amount of governing bodies yeah. and being able to influence so many people on the on the ground postal workers just everything and people are so sure of it it's yeah. like even just looking at it completely non-biased as if you don't have a dog in the fight just yeah. just look at it and say how how impossible would this be to pull off yeah I, that that's the frustrating thing is like and i've seen a lot of people that i know on and on, on varying levels like i have some people i know on like on facebook who are who are big trump supporters and then there are people who are kind of like you know not really but they hate liberals so they kind of side with trump and uh, you know that's I, I, and then I had, I had a friend um who or not i don't know you say a friend but somebody who, who we, were, we were in a chat group and i was trying to explain because she kind of started bringing up all these like isn't this weird isn't that weird and like you know one interesting thing so i, I did poll working this year um i ended up on standby and didn't actually go to the polls but um as part of the training you kind of get a good insight into how this stuff works and so you know i was trying to explain to her and and anybody you know it's like our system is actually incredibly secure. Like the there there are tons of redundant. I forget if I brought it up last week, but like there's there are tons of redundancies and safeguards built in to protect against cheating. So it's like 
can individuals can individual mail fraud or you know voter fraud happen be it by mail or whatever sure it can and i give an example like let's say but you know here's the, the challenge for that like if let's say you know in in your household right um you have somebody in your household that gets a mail in ballot you would have to steal their mail and take their ballot you'd have to fill their ballot out and then send it in you know, with a signature that matches theirs. And then you have to hope that they don't show up in the polls, you know, or that they don't show up at the polls to vote in person. And so effectively, you're committing two felonies for one vote, right? You're committing mail fraud, you know, by stealing yeah. their mail, you're, commit, you're committing voter fraud for one vote. So, you know, on, on a, on a individual scale, like sure that can happen. And I'm sure it does, you know, I, but, but I feel like it probably washes out both ways. It probably, you'll get some people on the left, some people on the right. Like, I don't think that matters. Um, but to do it on any, any scale to scale that up is nearly impossible. And you're right. Like you would need so many people involved, um, to, to not make it work. And even like in the polls, I think what people don't understand is like, when you're in, when you're count in a poll counting, you know, when you're, when you're there counting, there are already, you know, Democrats and Republicans there as poll watchers to make sure and observe and make sure that things are on the up and up. Um, and so again, it would take a massive, as you said, a massive conspiracy that would be nearly impossible to, to manage, you know, to, to, to do it on any scale. And, you know, to, and then, you know, the other common thing now is like, to think that like, that Biden would win, but we wouldn't have won the Senate too. <laughs> it kind of makes no sense. Although Democrats are kind of incompetent like that. So I wouldn't put me past them if they were to cheat, that they would just win the presidency and not take the Senate. But re- realistically, it's like, it's just not, not real. It's unrealistic that it's any just, of this would happen. It's just so ridiculous. You, you yeah. see that pe- people that are, you know, Trump cultists, they post every little thing that comes out. They're like, look at this, yeah. look at this, look at this. It's like, oh yeah, because you know, Eric Trump said something. <laughs> yeah. you, that means it's it's true, yeah. right? You know, or because some some person posted a video of yeah. how they witnessed, you know, you know, voter fraud. That's yeah. for, then you have to be you have to be yeah. sure that it's accurate, right? Yeah. And again, it's like one and, and on. sure there might be a couple of but you know, there might be one there or two are instances. There, but like there are. not yeah. nothing at scale and nothing that's gonna like change the election. So I, yeah. it, it's frustrating. You know, look, at the end of the day, my kind of take on that is if it needs to go to the courts, you know, I have a, like I have a client of mine who we was talking about it and, and uh, he's a lawyer and kind of saying the same thing. It's like, look, it's, it's, it's nothing. Um, but if they want to go to court, it's fine. You know, the, you know, Al Gore went to court in 2000 and at the end of the day with this, um, it's going to go nowhere, especially because like for anything to happen, like, you know, for him to overturn it, he would need to, you know, literally like, overturn four states which is just not going to happen yeah. so it sucks you know it sucks that it seems like you know he's going to be a sore loser and bitter and kind of hold the country hostage for the next you know 70 days but i'm, I'm at least it's not just one state like if it, if it came down to like one state we'd be in a you know, be a problem but you know, yeah it's got he's got four states that you know it's not going to happen it's not gonna so happen. it sucks um it confirms you know the the kind of the way that they're they're bringing in um you know, they're, they're kind of making our system look like it's fraudulent, and, you know, and anti-democratic. Yeah. It sucks that that's happening and that a lot of people are going to then believe that our voting system is, is somehow flawed and, and wrong, and it, which it's not. Um, but it confirms all of our beliefs. So kind of none of this yeah. is unexpected. So hopefully we get out of this on the other side and, um, you know, yeah, that'll that's be that, that. <laughs> until he runs in 2024. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, so more, a little more than than I wanted to to talk politics, but it, you know it's, it's hard not to, you know, when, to. when it's when it's just so prevalent in in, in our lives. Um, so, so what have you been up to fitness wise? Have you been exercising? Well, or? it's funny because I had been. I I've been exercising a lot. Uh, I've been doing a ton of jump rope. Although my calves started getting so sore and so tight, I couldn't do it anymore. And yeah. I so I have to, I started doing a lot of stretching. Um, okay for my calves. Um, and it helped a little bit, but that was annoying. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of jump rope and yoga and, and calisthenics at home. Uh, but the other day I came back after a walk and I was going to do some yoga and I just couldn't do any of it. I'm like, I'm not feeling well. And yeah. Sure enough that night I had a really bad fever. And then the next day I'm feeling a little better today. So I'm, I might have, I'm worried that I might have the cove. <laughs> so it, it's, it's certainly possible. Yeah, so we'll see oh. how that goes. it's like if that. you have it as we'll, we'll we'll probably talk a little more about when we get to the interesting study. Probably the worst time to have it, uh, with, you know, with our with the numbers kind of just uh, out of this world um, yeah. at this point. Um, so today's huh? we'll see. 
Yeah. So today we got you kind of have a little mishmash of uh, of things to talk about. So um, you brought up uh, so you sent me some stuff earlier this week um, that I had a chance to look at. So why don't you bring up, why don't you talk about kind of the the exercise equipment uh, questions that you had for me? So wow, I, I was just wondering how which direction you thought this would go. I saw an ad and I've seen a few uh, ads for different products. One of them was called Tonal and it seemed interesting. I didn't dive too much into it because that was your job, <laughs> but uh, it was sort of like uh, along the lines of the more smart exercises. Yeah. Basically uh, AI that controls or, or, or leads you in workouts. Yeah. Perhaps it even adjusts the weights or whatever your exercise is to maximize what you're doing theoretically maximize. So yeah. I just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, on that type of a product, and if you really see a future in that. Oh, I'm sure you do in one way or another. But yeah. and if you think that it's really, if it's just another device out there that you know could be good or it all that if the person's going to stick with it, or if you think that it's act could be a game changer. It's that yeah, it's a little tough. It's kind of like almost an all of the above type of situation. So yeah, if, you know, if you haven't seen like this, this like the equipment like Mirror, um, and Tonal, which are effectively kind of these smart devices. So they're you know you have like Peloton is another example, where it's basically you have whatever you know the some kind of a visual, um, there's some visual aspect of it so that you're kind of watching you're you know you're able to engage with the trainer whether it's virtually or or if it's streamed or somebody who's you know or recorded or whatever um so like mirror it's like literally looks like a mirror on your wall uh the tonal system is almost like a cable crossover type machine with like a video screen in the center you have peloton which is like the you know the spinning type bike with this video so all these kind of have some aspect of it that's got like where you can connect with the trainer and um, they're there to kind of motivate you and guide you and, and help you, you know, with whatever you want to do. Um, and then, you know, each of the different one, you know, each different kind of company has their own kind of take on it. And like I said, you know, Peloton's got a spin bike, but then they also have like group fitness classes. Um, you know, mirror again, it's like a, just it kind of sleek and it's like a mirror that's on the wall. Um, you know, in, in any of those cases, you know, it's hard because in some ways I'm skeptical of, of any of, of those J just because in general they tend to be you know over time you know a lot of these just tend to become you know giant clothes racks you know and uh they're gimmicky and the and like a lot of stuff in fitness the gimmick you know does a great job selling but a lot of times you know they don't have the staying power so um you know it's kind of tough i think i think for all of these given the time that we're in um, they're going to be successful and they'll probably, you know, they'll have some lasting success because of that. Because I think for a lot of us, um, for the foreseeable future, even after there's a vaccine, I think, you know, a lot of people working at home, um, just fear of going to the gym, uh, we're probably going to be in a situation where there are going to be people who are going to want to stick with, you know, the in-home, you know, exercising. Um, so I think they'll definitely carve out their niche and be successful. Uh, but, you know, the problems you have with those, I think, are the same problems you're going to have, you know, with any fitness equipment at home. And so it's really up to the person to figure out, like, is exercising at home for me? You know, are, is streaming, are streaming workouts, you know, for me? And if you're not somebody that thrives on that, you may or may not do well with that type of equipment. So, like, you know, for me, I know that wouldn't work for me. You know, as much as it looks cool and interesting, like, I kind of need to be around people to work out um and exercise and i need like uh, you know i need to train with people with friends or with the team um so i would have a little bit of a hard time kind of following along with like the virtual thing but i know lots of people who love it and they it motivates them like i like i don't know that i could get motivated by like a virtual like a person on screen that's not engaging with me like it's a streaming workout like the, you know even if they're motivating um, but I know some people who love it. And even if it is a recording, they love the workout. They love doing that. So I think a lot of it just depends on the person. But like the equipment all seems pretty legit um, and to some extent works. You know, it's just a matter of like the individual and does that style of exercise work for them and will they work out at home? So what do you think uh, of the idea of, um, you know, AI telling you what your workout should be? Base, you know, saying like adjusting the weights, saying like this is what you, you know, what this is your, um, what you've shown. This is your your body mass, you know, your age, your sex, your um, what your your workout history, your heart rate, um, 
this is what you should be lifting and then adjusting it and like basically just telling you what to do. Like, what do you think of that concept? I think it's, I think there's a lot of value to it. You know, that having something like that, there's a lot of value to it. I would question whether or not there's any technology advanced enough to actually do that properly. Um, Cause I think that any technology that can do that properly is going to cost way more money than the average person can afford. So I just don't see how there's a market there. Um, but at the same time, so? like, yeah, I mean, how hard could it be? Okay. I mean, if you just well, go here's off the thing. generics, I don't, well, that's the thing is like, you can guesstimate. So if the, if it's just guesstimating, that's fine. But to me, there's not a lot of value in the, you know, I mean, then it becomes a situation of it's personalizing, but it's kind of guesstimating its personalization. So it's more of a, it and then becomes a gimmick, you know? So, but, but for a lot of people that will work because that gets rid of the guesswork. So, you know, it, it, a lot of it is trial and error. And if a machine's just going to spit out what you should do, then that makes life easier for you. So there are a lot of people that will benefit from that. But what, I, what I'm trying to say is like, yeah. if you're really going to take in all that data, your, your height, your weight, your strength, because then also like you're looking at the machine's got to then measure the person's strength and um, you know, their muscle endurance and their overall strength. There's all these variables that then get input into the device if it's going to do it properly. And then it spits out like, here's the workout, here's the weights, here how we're going to vary things, here how we're going to progress. And so what I'm saying is that if, if a machine's going to accurately do that, it's going to cost a lot of money and it's not so? affordable. Yeah, absolutely. I don't at this, know. Like at they, this stage, they these, yes. They have, they, they have these algorithms that, that for, for everything nowadays that spit out incredibly but, accurate stuff. Like all you have to do is, is load in the, I think it wouldn't be that much because all so, you have to do is load in standard information and it just will. Here's okay. Maybe really let me think it's like that rephrase complicated. it. You, okay. The, the, reason why it's complicated is the measuring that's also involved. Like, so, so you, you'd have to have a device if you, again, if this is a smart device, right? So, cause if, if you, if it, for me to do it, right? Like, let's say I'm going to make these choices for somebody. I'm going to sit there and observe them perform a series of, of assessments and tests and, and exercises. And then I'm going to take all those, the, those um, you know, movements, those tests, the exercises, and then I'm going to look at it. And based on my knowledge, I'm going to make kind of certain decisions based on all of that, you know, all of the, that feedback. So, for now, not that a device can't do that more accurate than I can, because I'm sure you know there it can using algorithms. But it's if if we're looking at a smart device, it also has to take all of those measurements, and taking all those measurements is a challenge. You know, it, it would take an expensive piece of equipment to both do a you know a strength test and an endurance test and a balance test and check your heart rate and you know check um, you know muscle endurance and check you know and not just muscle endurance but different different muscles you're going to be are going to have different levels of strength and endurance um, and test your posture and test your gait and test your movement and so what I'm saying is that a smart device would have to be super advanced to take in all that information first. Then once it takes it in to spit out, you know, the workout is, is a different thing. So you're right. Like the, the actual algorithms that would be involved to determine it would not be the costly part. The costly part is the measuring part and then measuring progress. So if you're going to, you know, take the measurements and spit out, you know, your, your workout, it's also got to measure what you're doing as you're working out. How are you progressing? How, how is your strength increasing? Is your, you know, how is your, again, how is your form increasing? So, so a device that's going to do all of that is to me going to be a, extremely expensive. So that's the, the challenge is, yeah, I could take all these numbers and that information down and then I can plug it in something and then that machine can spit out the, you know, the, the, the you know, workout. That's the easy part. The hard part is the measurements. Yeah. And so that's what I'm saying is like a smart device to do it properly, I think is, is cost, you know, kind of cost prohibitive at this point. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, five, 10 down, years down the road, like we don't have better equipment that, that can do that. And I think that any equipment that's doing that now is largely guesstimating a lot, a lot of it. Okay. If that makes sense. I think we're headed in that direction now. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, look, if you look at the equipment now, even versus a few years ago, it, you know, it's getting there. Um, and, uh, you know, just, you know, but, but we're not quite there yet, especially at a, at a price point that will work for, for most people. Can, a, you know, uh, can, can a, a computer motivate you? 
maybe it depends on the person, you know, like, like for example, well, actually, no, you know, so I, I remember set what, it at different, you know, different settings, drill sergeant mode. Well, no, like okay. You, uh, Yogi you can, mode, you can gamify it. You can, you yeah. can have it, you know, <laughs> a mode that, you know, motivates you based on what, what works for you. You can have situations where like, it'll show you somebody else's, you yeah. know, strength levels and you're, you're working, to, you know, to catch up to that person. So there are definitely ways to, to make the machine motivate you, you know, just be, again, becomes as, as everything, um, you know, kind of person specific. Yeah. You know, if that, <laughs> if that makes yeah, no, sense. I, I, it always comes to, back to being person specific. Yeah, exactly. Like that's always, always what we get back to is like, you know, what, how does it, how does it work for the individual? Um, and that's why like these, you know, smart devices, like, um, I think they're, they're selling great. Um, and then the question, but the question really comes down to like, is it right for you? And if it's right for you, great. And then if it's not, then you might need to, you know, find another alternative. And I guess this makes a good segue. Um, so you brought, you mentioned uh, that, that you wanted to talk a little bit about outdoor workouts. Um, so now, have you been working out outdoors at all? Not, not too much, but I would like to, because I was, uh, when I was taking a walk and near me, there's a nice big open field. I was like, oh, I should make use of that. Now I know obvious things that I could do. I could do sprints and, and jumps and stuff like that. But um thought maybe asking you you might have a better idea also of of how to put a, a workout together because it's like yeah it's simple to say oh just go do a few sprints you know or do a bunch of jumps but is that the best workout to just do one thing or maybe combine it and say this is the not maybe this is the number of sprints that you should do this is the number of jumps you should do you know push-ups in the field like stuff like that so uh, that I don't know I mean about. that gets a little complicated like it's a little harder to talk about how to of program it's goal specific because, like if yeah. you're working on sprinting then that's what you should do yeah right. yeah I mean yeah that it gets a little bit yeah it's a little hard like I don't know that I'll be able to answer that part um for you as well I'll, you know I'll try um only because yeah it's goal specific it's person specific what do you have access to what are you you know trying to do how much time do you have um so yeah, you know, outdoor workouts are becoming obviously a lot more popular. Um, you know, I see people outside all the time now, um, you know, people training outside all the time. Um, and that's probably not going to change, um, uh, you know, for, for the foreseeable future. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there are a lot of great, you know, things you can do outside. So first thing I'll say is like, if you want to get equipment for outside, like what would be useful to get outside? So, um, the kettlebell is always good. Like just having, you know, whatever weight you can manage to, to take with you to the park, whether it's like, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30 pound kettlebell is great because you know, that it's one piece of equipment that you can use to do, you know, lots of strength exercises and, and kind of functional moves that, that will add to your workout if you're going to work out outside. Um, uh, TRX is also a great thing to have if you can do it outside, you know, lots of places like, you know, you'll find, you know, some, some elevated surface or like a, you know, lamp post or something that you can hook the TRX up, up to. And again, you can get a lot more kind of bang for your buck. Um, if you have something like that, cause it gives you a lot more variety, um, exercise bands. Um, we always talk about those bands can be really good for it to add to your outdoor workout. Um, you know, but you can also, you know, so you can also do like a, a ladder, like an agility ladder is great. Again, it's something that gives you a chance to do drills and kind of cardio exercises. That's a little bit more, can be more fun and dynamic and interesting than just running. It also helps with your hand eye coordination, um, you know, definitely help get the heart rate up. So those are st some equipment that might be worth looking into if you're going to try working outdoors because they're easy, you know, for the most part portable with the exception of like a heavy kettlebell. But, you know, for the most part, you know, portable, easy to use. Um, you can pretty much set them up everywhere. Um, and it makes the outdoor workout, you know, that much more like dynamic. Um, now, so when you're working on outside, so yeah, you, you know, assuming you have, you know, enough open space to, to use, like sprints are a great option for outdoor workouts because it gives you, you know, you have a lot more space to, to go. So doing sprints can be really good. Now, again, how many, how often, you know, rest work, rest ratios is going to be a little bit different, you know, for the person, but just being able to do it, it, it you know, is gives you, you know, a lot of op options, um, doing kind of traveling drills. So like drills where you can travel over an, a distance can work. And it could be something as simple as like walking lunges. Um, it could be like bear crawls, you know, um, Oh, another thing I'd say to get is gloves. Like if you're training outside, definitely wear gloves just cause you know, you're, you're moving from like, you know, you don't know what's on the floor. You don't know the types of surfaces you're going to be on. So I would definitely recommend having gloves, but, um, 
but yeah, you can do like, you know, bear crawls, frog walks, um, jump squats, burpees, all kinds of things where you're traveling distances. Um, so I love using like outdoor spaces to do things like that. Cause like if you're in a small gym, kind of hard to do like traveling lunges or, or bear crawls across the distance or Spider-Man walks and, and things like that. So looking at drills that allow you to kind of go through distances can be good. It's also kind of functional. They're good for, you know, good for, you know, athletic training. So totally say that that's something that would be fun, you know, and good to use. Um, you know, being outside, another thing you could do is like kind of look at what you have available. Like um, the park that uh, I usually train at, there's like stones. So I see people grab the stones and use them for like bicep curls or shoulder presses. So like use what's available. If there's like, if they're, you know, heavier branches or stones and things on the floor, you know, it, it's good. And not only does it help with the resistance training, but it's also really good for grip strength. Because if you think about it, like, you know, if you grab a dumbbell or a barbell, it, the, the bar um, is made for you to grab, you know, easily and so that you don't have to focus on holding it. But if you're gripping like a brick, it's not smooth. It's not easy to grab a hold of. So now you're also working on your grip strength in addition to, you know, whatever, you know, the exercises that you're doing. So that's another thing you can kind of think of. Um, you can create like obstacles. So if you have space, if you, if you're agile enough and, and you're healthy enough doing things where you're jumping on and off of, of surfaces where you're traveling through and around things might also be an interesting way. Um, you know, totally take advantage of stairs, you know, running stairs is a, it sucks. It's a horrible workout, but it, it's really, you know, really good for you. So, you know, if you're doing stairs can be great. Doing hills can be great. Um, you know, most parks, and outdoor spaces have benches and use the benches. You can do all kinds of ab exercises from the benches. You can do dips, um, different kinds of planks. You can do push-offs off the bench. So, you know, take advantage of your surroundings as well when you're working out outside. So that's another important thing is like be creative. Um, if there's, if you want to do pull-ups and you have an ele- like the park by us has uh, so- like huge soccer nets. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people will jump up and grab the, you know, use the frame of the soccer net to do pull-ups, you know, so just be creative with, with what's available. Um, and have fun. So like you can make the outdoor workouts a lot more fun than, um, than, you know, working out indoors. Now, again, like it's a little hard to program it because everybody's a little bit different, but you know, right now I think we're all in a place where we just want to be active and and be fit. So like, it's more that you're doing something and that it is hard than you're specifically doing like, you know, sure. sprinting, you know, 30 meters and then doing, you know, or whatever, you know, sprinting 20 yards and then doing 10 push ups and all that stuff. Like, no, just, you know, just have fun. And, and, yeah. you know, I would err on the side of less time resting and hanging out. Oh, there's my dog. Um, like less time just hanging out and doing nothing um, and spend a little bit more time. Sorry. Got somebody at the door. Uh, so less time, you know, quiet, quiet. Uh, yeah, spend less time kind of, uh, just hanging out and really more time working. It's always be, be efficient, okay. uh, which is always the key is like, you know, work hard, shorter amount of time is generally going to be better than spending a long time, but not working as hard or, or, or with lots and lots of rest periods. Nice. Um, and the last piece of advice I'll give for wet outdoor workouts is just always be aware of the weather. You know, so um, be dressed for it. So if you're, you know, if it's really cold, make sure that you're, you're, you know, dressed warm. You know, I like like cold weather. I like having like a pair of like Under Armour long sleeve, like shirt and tight tights and then layer on top of that. Um, And then, you know, obviously if you're running outside and it's really, really hot. Um, you've got to be aware of that and, you know, make sure that you're, you're hydrated. So just always pay attention to the weather. Um, you know, I find you can work outside in almost all kinds of weather. Um, you know, even really, really cold as if you're dressed warm enough, obviously if it's a blizzard, probably not a good idea. Or if it's torrential down, downpours, probably not a good idea, but as long as you're dressed appropriately, um, you know, the temperature, you know, shouldn't be a huge obstacle, you know, if you're in re- reasonable climate. You know, again, if you're in Antarctica, that's a little bit different. But, um, you know, if you're in New York, even when it gets really cold, it, you know, can get into single digits. You know, if you're dressed warm enough and it's not icy outside, you can still get a decent workout outside. Nice. All right. That's any. Uh, now that sounds Questions good. of that? Cool. Sounds good. Well, Once I'm feeling better, I'll go and start working out outside again. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so for a little change, so you've got the interesting study today for us. So why don't you uh, explain um, what we learned about, uh, about COVID and super spreader spreading events? So, all right. So we, uh, we looked at an article that was published uh, from Bloomberg and it had, um, it, 
basically they took data from cell phones that talked about where people went right it uh and and i and before you start your your conspiracy theories of uh <laughs> of uh you know knowing where you where you're going and stuff like that sorry they know <laughs> everything about you you know where you go like you know your 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 phone is a gps so and now and, and it, i i don't it didn't get too into that so i don't know if they knew exactly who it was but it was more just looking at large groups and the very first thing that came up was basically saying that reopening of gyms and restaurants and hotels carries a huge risk the highest risk of of having new infections so that um and it's corresponding completely with what's happening in new york yeah. where everything is about to be shut down again and we knew it was going to happen it was only a matter of time um so oh and by the way the, the researchers mapped between march and may yeah. and compared how um it, com it, it basically compared where people went to how infection spread and that's where yeah. they came up with this um a few more bits of information that was included it said that people that have a lower income or at, at a higher risk yeah. uh, because they were uh, they're more likely to be in smaller more crowded areas yeah. And also in situations where they can't avoid being in there, you know, so yes, like if you, yes. you know, if you work uh, for a bank, you're probably going to be working from home where if you work in a grocery, you know, you, you're, you're going to be working in a grocery. So generally, like if you're lower income, you're, you're in a, you're in a more crowded situation yes. and you're also in a financial position where you, you know, you're, you have to be at work yeah. and you're not, you're not going to be, in a, you know, sent to work remotely. Um, yeah, and so you know, the grain of salt with this is only that you know, obviously it doesn't take into account you know the restrictions that were put put in place in gyms. Um, so we, the gyms that I've seen so far seem to be fairly safe, but it, you're still putting yourself at risk. And and as we see, you know, the numbers are skyrocketing, in, you know, around the country. Unfortunately, the problem is it's kind of hard to say what's you know what's causing it because you have so much kind of non-compliance or in some areas where they just don't care i saw so there's a guy that used to come to my kickboxing gym he would come every once in a while it's from houston and uh and so he posts videos and pictures of him working out onto instagram and he posted a picture on instagram of him working out at a commercial gym so it wasn't at a kickboxing gym he didn't have a mask on in the gym Nobody, there was at least 10 people I saw in that picture. Nobody had a mask on in the gym. And I was just like, how can anywhere not allow masks, you know, in, yeah. in a gym? It's and also it's just insane. reliant on the, uh, that uh, compliance and then human error or human lack of care. Yeah. So restrictions of rely that people are actually going to follow the rules. Yeah. And I, and, and driving, uh, where I drive because I drive often from Nashville to New York, especially I'm not flying anytime soon. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. Like I'll go in and I'll I'll need to go something at a like a, a mart or something like that, get a drink or whatever it is, gas. And it, there's always a sign on the on the door that says you must wear a mask if yeah. you're working here or if you were shopping here yeah. to follow with state you know and local ordinances. And I go in and no one's wearing a mask. The people yeah. working there wow. aren't wearing a mask. People shopping there aren't wearing a mask, yeah. and it's and it's like yeah, what what I I, I could report them. What's that going to accomplish? Yeah, right. I could, could I could yeah, I could say hey, look at this. You're like I've no no one was complying with it. I, yeah. I don't know what that's going to accomplish. Right. It's just like this is happening. Very uh, you know it's 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 very common. It's so yeah. it requires that people actually comply yeah. with what is being suggested. Now yeah. a couple of a couple of interesting things. Um, is that it, the, the this model predicted that in Chicago, if everything was to open up, that we would have they would have six hundred thousand new cases. Okay. And and conversely, that if restaurant capacity was reduced to twenty percent, the infections would redu be reduced up to eighty percent. Yeah. So yeah, it it just it goes to show that. <laughs> hey, look, and we're not. Nothing's going out on a limb here. Um, more people together, higher cases. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, it's like you. You were. That's the situation we're in. And yeah, it's like it's unfortunate because I think nobody wants another lockdown. Um, but we're inching to that point of no return, and we're getting to that point where we may have another lockdown. And it's frustrating because if people would, if we would just comply, 
it would make our lives much easier, you know, and uh, yeah, places that, yeah, you know, like in China where they, you know, just, it's almost non-existent or like I said, in other countries where they've just been able to manage this so well that, you know, it's not an issue. And then here we're dealing with, you know, this isn't just our third spike. Like we're getting hit so hard and I don't yeah. see, you know, I don't see what, what, how, how, how do people still deny? There's still lots of COVID deniers too. I, I don't know. What, I, what was the funny thing that, that I saw? It was like, it, it's funny how people can believe in an election fraud <laughs> with no evidence, <laughs> yeah. but not believe in COVID with like, you know, 250,000 deaths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true. It really, you know, it really is true. It's like, I, I don't understand it. Um, I, Cause it just doesn't benefit anybody to, to deny it at this point. Uh, it's here, uh, and, you know, and it's, it's clearly, you know, it's spreading rapidly. It's not, you know, it's not just another flu. It's really bad. And, and luckily, yeah. like we, you know, we, the vaccine seems to be coming and uh, being developed at a rapid pace, but. But it's still um, months away. You can't just yeah, it's months away. You no, know, exactly. So, I mean, at that's the thing. Six, is like, probably six months away yeah, at least. For, yeah. I mean, three months. I mean, you can't test well, a vaccine in three months. Like. Well, no. So, I mean, the vaccine, if all goes well, it will begin to be distributed in December, like to the, the you know, most at risk. But, oh, that's Jeez. my crazy dog. Uh, but, um, you know, wide, like to, to widely produce it um, and for everyone to have it, yeah, it's going to take at least spring if we're lucky. And, and then, not, you know, not to add to the fact that it, it, you're going to have to get two doses. Um, so there's a lot, you know, there's a lot going on. And um, it's, you know, we're in a position where, you know, there may have to be another lockdown and uh, it's going to, kill our you know already very fragile um economy uh which which sucks so it's like yeah if you can you know and then thanksgiving's around the corner so this is going to be be a rough uh potentially a rough winter all right we're gonna have to hope that uh people get their acts together but uh in the meantime we've got an ask the trainer so uh justin why don't you share the um ask the trainer question okay so this question comes from nick uh and nick thank you for writing in And Nick uh, writes, I've been bodybuilding for about eight years now. Currently, I'm 5'10", 190 pounds, and about 12% body fat. I found that over the last year or so that my strength has continued to steadily increase, but I'm not getting bigger. Can you explain why it is that I'm not, that I'm getting stronger, but not bigger? What can I do? Thanks for such an informative podcast. Very cool. Again, Nick, thank you for writing in. It's a great question, um, and there's a lot to unpack, um, so I'll try to keep it as, as simple and, and brief as I can. So um, when it comes to increases in strength, um, if you just think about, okay, why am I lifting a heavier weight this week than I did last week? There are a few things to consider. So one is the actual like size of the muscle, right? like the kind of cross-sectional area of the muscle. like That's going to increase, and so when that increases, that will help you increase strength. Another thing that will help is skill. So as you become more skilled at the move, um, you're going to increase the weights that you're doing. So you want to consider that too. You know, that's where like, you know, technique and form are really, really important. And as you increase your form or or as your form gets better, um, you're generally going to increase your strength. So those are two areas. Um, Another is a kind of neuromuscular system adaptation. So that is connected with skills. So basically you're, you know, as you're learning and developing a movement, your brain is kind of firing um, your brain and body are kind of trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to do this? You know, you're firing these impulses and, and figuring out, you know, what, what's the proper, you know, um, sequence of, of firing of the muscles in order to produce this movement. And so as you do it more and more frequently, your body becomes more and more efficient at doing it. So you're, you're kind of using le- less energy is spent on figuring out how to do the movement. Um, and then that, you know, neuromuscular kind of adaptation will then help you develop the skill and help you do the movement more efficiently. And then you're wasting less time. Less time is wasted figuring out the movement and more is spent actually producing the movement. So that's going to help. Um, you also have things like focus um, and kind of motivation. So that's also going to help a little bit more. So that's where like world records are generally broken in competition because, you know, the person is much more focused, much more motivated. So that's going to play into it a little bit. Um, and then you have things like, you know, kind of the muscle excitation levels, which is related to what we were talking about before, um, joint stiffening, um, tendon, ligament adaptation. So these are all things that are kind of happening, um, you know, at the same time. So those are all the, you know, for the most part, you know, the components, uh, 
of, of what's helping you to increase the weight that you're lifting from time to time. Now, generally the, the most, the two most important are going to be the muscle size, um, and the skill, you know, that as you get better at those two, um, that's where the, the most of the strength gains are going to happen. So, you know, when it comes to getting, so when we're talking about training, you know, there's, there's hypertrophy training, training, which is when you're thinking about actually getting bigger. So that's what bodybuilders are really focused on. So bodybuilders are doing, you know, their focus is building muscle and then losing body fat, um, especially as they're getting closer to like a competition. Um, where like strength athletes, their focus is force production. You know, how much force can I produce um, to, to move this weight, you know, um, in whatever direction I need to move it. So there are different goals a lot, there's a lot of overlap, right? Cause again, the, you know, since your muscle size is a huge factor in muscle strength, um, you're going to want to get, you know, bigger if you want to get stronger, but there, you know, it's not kind of a one-to-one thing. So, you know, you are going to have situations where you're going to have these strength gains, um, that aren't necessarily accompanied by, by gains in size. So when the focus is on strength, you're generally focused on much, much heavier weights, um, and you're, you're focused on the technique and they tend to be more movement based. So it involves a lot of different muscles to produce the movement. You're not just doing like an isolated move, like a bicep curl or like a leg extension. So, you know, when you're doing that, um, so for strength training, it's much less weight and it's more focused on how much force can I generate? Can I, you know, per, it's, so it's perfecting the technique, um, you know, it's force generation and it's lower, lower reps, higher weight. Um, when you're dealing with building the size of the muscle, in that case, um, it's a lot more about muscle fatigue. So we're more focused if we're, if we're trying to build muscle to get bigger, we're really focused on fatiguing the muscle. So that tends to be a lot more repetitions. Um, and you can build muscle doing really high reps, like 15, 20 reps, or you could do it at a lower rep range, like eight to 10. Once you get below kind of a six rep range, um, it tends to be a little bit harder to, to, to build muscle. You tend to get a little bit closer to that strength level. But generally, when you're looking at getting bigger, you're trying to, again, fatigue the muscle and create this kind of um, hormonal adaptation, which kind of helps with uh, or, or kind of adaptive you release hormones that help with this kind of response that allows you to, to grow. So, and again, also with hypertrophy training or, or bodybuilding training, while there are bigger movements, you're also isolating muscles as well because you're focused on specific muscles. So if you need to build, you know, the deltoids, um, you're going to isolate that area. If you need to build the biceps, you're going to isolate that. So there's a lot more isolation training um, where strength training tends to be a lot more kind of, you know, movement based. So um, specifically for you, um, Nick, right, was, was the, was the uh, person who asked the question. So specifically for you, it, you know, without having a lot of details on your program, I would say a couple things, a couple mistakes people make is one, um, doing the same exercises over and over. So what happens is if you do the same movements over and over, like I said, you build skill. And so if you're building the skill, you almost have a harder time, you know, pushing your muscles past fatigue. So you might want to think about changing things up and trying different exercises. Um, that might be something that'll help you uh, as far as building muscle, kind of tr- change things up. Um, and that'll help with the fatigue. Um, but also, if you're, we- if you're lifting heavier weights, you might want to think about lighter weights, um, a little bit higher reps, pushing yourself to fatigue and just increasing the overall volume of your workouts. So, you know, you may need to do, let's say if you're doing a chest, I'm just throwing it random, you know, and let's say you're doing three exercises for your chest and you're doing six reps per exercise. Maybe you need to think about doing, you know, five or six exercises and pushing up to, you know, eight to 12 repetitions, you know, per, per thing. So it's just kind of increase the overall volume, but always kind of pushing yourself to, to muscular fatigue. And another thing I would say is you might need to start isolating muscles again, if the goal is hypertrophy, you know? Um, so that's something for you to think about. Like it may, you know, if you're really into, let's say you're doing a lot of like, you're doing deadlifts and squats and, and power cleans, and you're doing things that are more movement based. If you love doing that, you might have to think, is it worth it for me to focus on other moves? Um, you know, if you really enjoy doing those, those movements. So that's something to just consider. Like, do you, maybe you like the strength training and maybe it's not worth building the size um, to, to forget about the strength training. Or like I said, um, you know, maybe you, you don't care about that. You just want to get bigger then you know, isolate some muscles and just kind of increase your overall volume. 
An another thing to, to think about is, uh, is your diet, right? Mm, Especially when okay. it comes to size. And are you taking in enough calories? Because you need to be, you can't be at a caloric deficit, right? Yeah. You need to, you need to take in a lot more calories. And of course, with that, always you want good quality food. So you want to make sure you're getting good fat in there, you know, a lot of protein. And of course, well, as sleep, as always, make sure that you're sleeping well enough. But what is, uh, you know, what is your diet? Are you getting in a, a surplus? Do you need, you need a surplus? Is it a surplus of calories? Yeah. Or so you need a surplus? Well, he, I mean, in this case, what the, is assum the? the assumption is he's trying to gain, well, he's, he's trying to get bigger. So the okay. assumption is he's trying to put on weight. So in that case, yeah, you need to be in a you know, caloric surplus. So you need to take in more calories than you're burning per day. So that's a great point um, that if, you know, the, another thing could be that you're lifting heavy and you're getting stronger, but you're just not eating enough um, to help with the size. So increasing the calories will definitely be something that, that um, you might want to look into in order to put on a little bit more size. Okay. Cool. So Nick, thank you for writing in. We hope that, that, uh, that, that helps you in your bodybuilding journey. Yep. And as usual, if you have any questions, send them to the gymwits at gmail.com. We love to, we love to answer your question and, and as many as we get in, um, we'll keep putting these out. All right. So I guess that's another one in the books. Um, I don't think there's much else to, to talk about. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we, we have a little more clarity um, on the whole election process, uh, you know, is, or, 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 or at least we have some conciliatory speech um, unlikely as it may be but um yeah as usual uh send your questions comments uh to gymwits at gmail.com uh check us out um rate us review us uh if you haven't subscribed uh subscribe um rate us and up podcast and all that good stuff i'm ryan george i'm justin guild aka chef sonic reminding you that truth does not sell and we are the gymwits <laughs>